Hi, I'm Laura Giordana from Nutanix Technical Marketing. And in this video, we're gonna walk through how to configure Prism Central Backup and Restore so that in the event that something happens to your Prism Central instance, you'd be able to restore it in another location. So to get started, navigate to Prism Central settings from the main infrastructure dashboard, and then click on Prism Central Backups. There are two backup options available. The continuous backup is a real-time backup with an RPO of 30 minutes and an RTO of two hours. This option retains only the latest backup, and these backups are stored on up to three registered PRISM element clusters. We also have the point-in-time backup, which backs up to S3 compatible object storage. This can be either Nutanix objects or AWS S3. It has configurable RPO. The RTO remains the same at two hours, and it allows selection from multiple backup points. These restore points can be retained for up to 30 days. You can configure up to four backup locations in total, a combination of up to three registered clusters for continuous backup and one S3 configuration for point in time backup. Let's start by configuring a continuous backup. This option backs up Prism Central configuration data to one or more of its registered Prism elements. When we click on protect now, we'll see a summary of what will and won't be backed up. Next, we'll click on continue and you'll be shown the clusters registered to this Prism Central instance. I'm going to select one of my Prism element clusters for the backup. Then I'll click proceed and the data sync will begin to the Prism element database. We can see that the sync is in progress and returning to the summary view, we can confirm that our continuous backup is now configured. Next, let's configure a point in time backup to an S3 compatible object store. Clicking on protect now, we'll again see the summary of what will and won't be backed up. Click on continue and then select either your Nutanix objects or AWS3 bucket. Here, I'm going to use my Nutanix objects endpoint. We'll need to enter in the details for our Nutanix objects object store, and this includes the bucket name, as well as the access credentials that have permissions to that bucket. And there's a specific set of permissions that need to be applied, and the Prism Central documentation will outline what those are. Then we'll select the RPO, and again, you can choose various intervals up to 24 hours, and I'm gonna select one hour in order to create a restore point every hour. Next, we'll click on proceed. The system will then validate our backup configuration. And once that's done, the sync will begin. So coming back a little while later, we can see that both of our backup options are now configured. We can see our continuous backup was last done about 11 minutes ago, and our point in time backup was done almost one hour ago. So now at this point, we have backups of Prism Central. And so if we need to restore it, we can go ahead and log into any Prism element to restore from the S3 object store, or we can log in directly to the configured Prism element cluster and restore from the continuous backup. So logging into the Prism element cluster where we've actually backed up our Prism Central configuration, we can see what our options are. So it shows us that we're disconnected from our registered Prism Central and gives us a link to restore it. This link will take us to the restore Prism Central option on the settings page. And since we have the local backups, we have the option to either restore that specific Prism Central from our local backup, or we can restore any Prism Central from S3 compatible object storage. So if you're logging into a Prism element that was not receiving backups, you'll only have the option to restore from S3 object storage. So let's just see what each of these looks like. So of course, we're only gonna to wanna to restore from one location, um, but let's see what the options are on each. So looking first at what it looks like if we restore the Prism Central from the local Prism element, it'll first give us some information about how it will create a new Prism Central and how you don't want to power on the old Prism Central at all. And of course, we wanna only initiate a, a single restore. So once we click on continue, it's gonna go ahead and show us the local backup that it has. So there's only one restore point, And so that's the most recent backup. Next, it will let us choose from either downloading the software for Prism Central from the internet or upload the installation binary, for example, if you were in a disconnected site. Then we'll want to give our local networking details for the new Prism Central on this new cluster. And then finally, we will go ahead and see a summary 
of what that information we provided was, and then you can go ahead and start the restore process. So in this case, let's go ahead and cancel this and walk through what it looks like for the S3 compatible object storage. So it'll provide that same disclaimer, and then we need to enter in all the information for where our backup is residing. So that's in our Nutanix objects object store, and so we'll need to give it all that same information that we provided um, when we originally configured the backup. So it'll show us all the available backups in that bucket, and so we can see that we have our specific Prism Central here, and clicking on next, we'll see all the available restore points. So this is a point in time backup. So we're able to select again from our various restore points. Remember we set that RPO to one hour. So I'll go ahead and just select the most recent backup. And the next few steps will look very familiar. So we'll first select where to get the installation image. We'll then configure the networking for our new Prism Central. And then finally review the summary. And in this case, we'll go ahead and initiate the restore. And so that will kick off the recovery task that we'll be able to monitor from the tasks page. And once it's done, we'll have a new Prism Central running on this cluster. So we can see that after a little over an hour, our Prism Central restoration is fully complete and we're now able to log in to that new Prism Central. It's going to be using the default password. So you'll need to reset that to match your environment. And you'll also wanna take a look at the post restoration considerations in the Prism Central documentation for more information on what you'll need to reconfigure or take into consideration during the restore process. Once we're logged in, we can see those registered clusters. We can see all of our VMs here. We see that old PC powered off. And we can, for example, look at our intelligent operations playbooks uh, and see, for example, that our playbooks were restored here as well. So this video hopefully helps you to understand the Prism Central backup and restore process and what it looks like. We'll see you in the next video.